I actually am charging the battery of the Mazda because um, I haven't been driving it a lot so I stayed without battery so I'm just charging it up with this C-Tech charger what do we have there? three dots okay just all that'll take a while it's really empty so yeah pretty cool the RX-8 so yes I want to go out with the RX-8 you know so I have to charge the battery and uh, got to organize all these cars in and out, in and out. Okie dokie. Welcome to the Daily Life Project channel. Yes, let's go. So today we got um, finally the rubbers, the seals for the doors arrived of the 4x4 UMM. Okay, I know a few of you are going to know this make. It's quite rare in the world. And um, yes, we're going to get to it. And then um, got some more electronic content for you guys as well and uh, some other stuff let's get to it <laughs> okay so last time we tried to put some seal rubbers on this door but we needed a, a higher okay rubber so i ordered it and the one we were going to use on this door we ended up using on this door right here which is working perfectly okay it's really stayed nice really looking good so now we're gonna go and do this one and the other door okay so now that i know better maybe i'm also going to do it on the citroen saxo because uh, i know where to buy it just going to open this up so i bought this from orthodox because actually they have it for this car they don't have for, have for all cars unfortunately um, i'm gonna have to find a, a dealership that can get me more variety of rubbers um, on the next car events, there will be uh, there's like a, a distributor that sells all type of rubbers. Then I'll show you guys the name, and I'm sure that then we'll be able to get for the Citroen Saxo proper ones. So that will be interesting. So right now, yes, we got this one. Okay, so I think this one is the. Yes, this one is the taller one. Yes, I think this one's the taller one. Let's compare this one to this one right side. Come in handy. So let me compare this one to this one. Let's see which one's taller. Do, 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 do. Yeah, got it. Just see here because with one hand it's not easy <laughs> so this one's taller hey mm -hmm. I think so Let's see here yes this one is taller definitely so we need the taller one for the trunk so you hold the one for the trunk now hold this one for the side door. And the Jeep will have complete new rubbers on the doors. Yes. Okay. So now we just have to do this like last time. Yes. So I'm going to start from the bottom. I like to. Oh, yes. See? Yeah, it's a big difference. Yeah. So this is the one for the trunk. Okay, for the back door. Okay. So I'm going to just start. The joints I'm going to leave it at the bottom, like always, and uh, go all around. Okay, so I'll show you guys just now how it stayed. Let's go. Okay, so really got this rub in place. Then I'm going to go to a more light up area down there to show you guys better. So this rub is already in place and it's closing perfectly. I'll show you guys. Not perfectly, 
because only God is perfect, but it's closing excellent. <laughs> and uh, now I'm taking out the this old sponge that it had on the window because the old rubbers weren't working, so it had a sponge here to keep the rain from coming in. Uh, just passing a, a blade and then this um, anti-adhesive uh, product that removes all the stickiness, you know. So yes, let's go. Okay, so now I'm going to remove this rubber from here, from this door. This was some old rubber. <laughs> okay, it's actually satisfying to remove the old stuff out and put in the new one. Okay, and now remove this out. And we're almost there. Okie dokie. And there you go. Old rubber out. And now in with the new one. Okay. We got everything brand new on the rubber side. Yes. Okay. So we got it all done. That's all done. I don't like using a lot of the flashlights for the videos, but um, it got a bit dark, so there's nothing we can do. Uh, so yes, looking excellent. I actually use this scissors to cut the cord. It's much easier, and then just cut whatever's left over with the a blade. Um, okay, so now let's just. Close it up. Yes. Excellent. Excellent. Look at that. All sealed around. You see? That's what you gotta see. It has to come a bit out. I actually have to wash the 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 UMM again. I don't like saying Jeep because Jeep for America is a make jeep here in portugal we call this 4x4s a jeep <laughs> but um it is what it is <laughs> so i'll just say i'll just call it uh, umm okay that's the make of the car as you can see for those who have seen this for the first time the channel umm Ching. <laughs> okay so yes the rubber is all nice and packing a bit out that's exactly what i wanted so that there's no air or wind going inside while we're driving and no rain now we open again and now it's just going to get used to it now it's just it is it's just like that you know it's old school army stuff the rubbers will adjust as well with time here at the back also got all the new rubber in place okay so yes it's looking pretty pretty cool so yes it's looking pretty cool pretty good I'm happy with that and when I close the door now so we took out all this um, dirty rubber sticky stuff okay the stickiness of the old sponge that was here at the door it's all cleaned up I am going to wash the car then. Um, this is like from the residue of that liquid. I'll probably just pass it again, the liquid. Uh, let's just close up the door and see how it is now. See? Excellent. See? Now you can see that this rub is higher. So there's no space between the door and the structure of the car, the frame, you know. Look here, see? Coming out a bit here. That's excellent. I'm getting a proper seal now. And I wasn't getting a proper... Before I wasn't getting a proper seal and now I am, so that's good. Looking very nice. Okay, so quite easy. 
and uh, now we can just take it on a little road trip and see how it behaves yes okay so very easy to change the door rubbers everyone let's go yes you see so I'm going to change take this out then take this part out and this one I'm already repairing the grill from the front and uh, let's switch it off quickly <laughs> I'm already repairing the grill of the front so um, this is going to be a different one because this one's plastic and I got now a proper fiberglass one that I showed on the previous videos if you go check it out um, I'm repairing it and then I got a new part for this one because this one's cracked here this is also plastic ABS and this one's fiberglass and I got another fiberglass one to boot on that one right there so what I'm going to do I'm going to take the three parts out so that I paint the three at the same time like that there's no difference in colors so yes that's the next project you'll see me repairing that part that's going to be there and then um, once I'm starting to install this, I'll also get that on content. And also the job is done. Okay, let's go. It's a very loud 4x4 diesel. Old school. It's a beauty. <laughs> okay, can go. So it's a hassle to get it inside here. Yeah? Can come. I also have to get a new spare wheel tire. Not a wheel, a tire. This one's quite old. I don't like the way it looks. You just help him out. Okay, so that's done. It looks very nice. Okay. Wow, we really needed rubbers on this one. Unfortunately, got this uh, at night, so. Couldn't do much more. Opa. Okay. Oh, such a nice lettering. Raptor. Look at that. <laughs> it's really cool. It should be cool if it didn't say that always, because sometimes I can't see that nice image. Okay, so now we're here in our headquarters. Um, this is our professional workbench. Um, where we do all our electronical working. So we built this uh, working bench ourselves because you can't buy something like this. So we just put all the supplies we need in terms of electricity. Um, we got our amp meters, we got everything, you know, everything that we need to test all the equipment that we work for. Um, and that's all the stuff we work with. So yes, we got our 230 AC right there. Our 120 AC then we got our 12 volts 6 volts over here we got a amp meter so that we can measure the current and uh, and do other testings then we got our regulated 0 to 235 AC um, so from here all the way down there that's our AC and from here all the way down there we got our DC uh, where we can go up to a thousand volts. volts on this DC, one here yeah. DC yes a thousand volts yes we can go until that so we got our regulator 310 DC here and then we got a uh, thousand right there so yes we got all our testing equipment that there is also um, for the three phase we is, is separated okay because it didn't fit down on that side there um, and we also don't have 380 there, so we wanted to leave the 380 AC right there in that little space over there. That's separated. And it's all protected on the circuit board, everything properly done. Um, yes, so, and we got normal plugs here as well, so it's quite complete to do all our testing. So that's why whatever you guys want to like figure out, if you guys have doubts of <laughs> electronical stuff, or electricity or measuring or this or that we can help you guys out okay you guys just have to comment and tell us what you'd like to see so today we're going to learn how to switch a contactor 
which some people don't know, a lot of people do know. <laughs> um, we did switches the other day, normally open, normally closed uh, contacts on switches. Um, so that's quite easy. Then we also have a pneumatic. Uh, that we can also show you guys how to switch on pneumatic components as well. We can also talk about that if you guys want to learn. 5-3-way, uh, five, 5-2-way, way, five, way, whatever you guys want to talk about. And we got our pressure switches, hydraulic, pneumatic as well. Um, we got a, like almost everything you guys need to learn. Resistors, capacitors, whatever you guys want to get into. Okay, we can do it. <laughs> So today we'll just do like contactors because I know it's something that a lot of people like to um, multimeter, which could actually start out by showing you guys how to use a multimeter. Um, I think I can use this one over here. Yes. So um, multimeters are quite easy. You got um, normally they switch on. Switch off by themselves, you know, to save battery. So you always have to put it like on off and then go to the settings you want. So this symbol right here, that's volts AC, okay. And this symbol here is volts DC, okay. Then you got your millivolts. Um, it's not like a daily use thing that we do. It's more when we're testing like equipments and uh, projects. Then you got our ohms, that's for resistors and diodes. Some don't have the diode, others do. Um, that's for the noise, okay? Because the then we can show you get a diode. Maybe we can show them how to measure a diode. For example, yeah. here you go. Oops, sorry. Yeah, see, this is a diode. This, for example, is the. This is a 2BY228, yes, and um, to measure diode, quite simple, you just uh, negative, negative cathode, 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 positive, positive anode. anode, okay, and if you measure like that, you'll actually see there's sometimes a stripe or marking, okay, yeah. that's your cathode, cathode. and that's it's your anode, anode okay. Yeah. And you and see, it will volts. give you like a reading. 0.46 volts. 0 0.46 volts. 0.5 can go up to yeah. 6. Exactly. If you go around that and if you around, go the other way, zero, it will be think. open. Oh, if it was like um, burnt, um, it, it like would be, this. yes, like okay. It will be yeah. like closed, okay. Yeah. So normally it would make also a noise in this no, multimeter. No, in, in that mode. In this yes, mode. Yes, in this mode. In this mode. Yes, this if mode, you put the sound, yes. you see? It will be like yes. this, this mode. So that will but make a here, noise. Yeah, it wouldn't work. Yes. Where it doesn't work. See? Okay. It's not bent. Yes. Some actually have. We used to have one that had noise on the yeah, while measuring good. diodes, yeah, but that's were good. Um, then you got this is for the capacitors. Capacitors. Which we do have a proper capacitors. capacitor yeah. meter. Yes, we have a, a, a capacitor meter yes, there. Yeah. Yes, see, for example, we have. Yes, this is the capacitor. capacitor. See? So, because we're getting into the capacitor now, this here you can um, read all different type of capacitors and diodes as well. Yeah. You see? Um, it's quite cool. You also got diodes here. And then you got your all your resistors, okay? All the scales of ohms. Which you can uh, also test. Um, some because sometimes these don't really. No, they're not very accurate. They don't give very accurate. For example, it's giving one point ninety five nano. So one nano nanor that's giving. So and, one uh, yes, it would be. It should be one nano. Yeah. And here it's giving one point ninety five. If yeah. we use this one. Two nanos, no? I don't know if it's giving contact. Maybe you got to get the proper plugs. Yes. No, it's not. Are oh, you out? You are out. Uh, nah, the supplies <laughs> they are getting in there. I thought it would be easier. They're right there, yeah. yeah. These ones, these ones, uh, those ones, no, not these ones. It's 
Those ones, yes. This ones. Yes. This. This ones. Yes, you can also. Uh, the, no, that's what I'll get there. The no. Thing. Is it these ones? Could it be these ones? Let me test that out. Wait. Yes, it's these ones. So, yeah. There you go. See? It's got um, a different plugging. There you go. Okay. No, you can use this one. Yeah. There you go. Yes. Okay. And. Uh, you see, just put it on one side and the yeah, other. 1.1. 1. 1. 1. 1. 1. You see? No, no. So, this might, this will be probably the real value. Here they put 1, 1. Uh, 1, but it doesn't mean yeah, it's no. 1. They just do it so that when they sell you the components, you no, say, I want it's, a, uh, a 1 it's nano. It's 20%. It's 20%. 20%, yeah. But they yeah. put this reading so that you ask, I want a 1 nano yeah, so 1. Uh, farad really. capacitor, yeah. and they give you this. You aren't going to ask for one point. One eight, you know, <laughs> so that's why they work for like standard scales, but in reality, it's 1.18, 1. 1. 1. 1.2. Okay, he has was giving us 1.8, he has giving 1.1, 1. 1. so it's a big 1. difference. 1. It's a big difference. This is a one micro, one micro, two micro there. Yes, you see, and it's giving us 0.1. Uh, That's point oh one, point oh one, but bigger though. Point two hundred then, two hundred then. There we are, one oh yeah. one. This is point See? oh one, so it's ten nano. Ten nano is, is comma oh one. Yes, comma oh one, one micro. microfarad. Yes. So if you put in micros there, it's going to give oh comma one. Yes. Oh comma oh, one. one. Oh. See, so it's very oh, precise. One. If you use a oh comma one, oh comma one. Okay. Right. So if you use a proper capacitor meter, it's better for capacitors than the normal yeah. multi See? multimeter. Yes. Um, these are actually very good. I bought these on Amazon. I bought two. They're very nice. They actually also measure diodes, you see. If you put it on diode mode, you can see. I think it's won't have the... This one doesn't have noise anyways. Yeah. No. And you can measure also LEDs and everything, so. There we go. You see? 0.5. Yes. 2.9. And if you, if you switch it, them. Nothing. You see? Zero. It's the same. Yeah. Okay. And if you put it on, for example, that will give you something. No, no, no that's that's the inductance. Yeah, that's, that's inductance. Won't give you on that's that. That's impedance. Yes. That's impedance. For resistors. Yes. Capacitance. So you can and do resistance. quite a lot with this. Um, just not <coughs> volt voltage meter. Okay, you can't do volts on this. So um, yes, and then next you have this is for and using the multimeter as an amp meter. DC. Uh, DC. DC. And AC, milliampere. Uh, then you got milliamp and microamp. And microamp, which, which we don't use a lot. This millions. normally because our machines no. and already have amp it's meters. But milliamps. when milliamps, we do yeah. need, we will use the the multimeter. Yeah. Um, and we all also have our amp meters here on the on the bench, so we don't really you know yeah. need the multimeter for that. But anyways, now you guys know when you want to go into amp meter mode. You got to remove these plugs over here, okay? Meter? Yes, just put it there so while I just hold it. <laughs> Sorry. This is common. You put this in a meter. You see, you just put... That's only this one. Okay. In common, the That's negative plug, okay, or black plug. Yeah. And you put the, the red in, if it's in amp. Once you change it to, you change to milliamp, milliamp remember always to change, change it, okay? So that you don't damage your multimeter. Yeah. And that's it, you see, it actually tells you there for volts, yeah. for resistance, yeah. diodes, capacitors. So it's all written down here. Yes. I actually bought this through um, AliExpress, these Fluke multimeters, and they're actually quite good, to be frank. I mean, we burn, we can burn one of these the same way you can burn, burn a, a European no, Fluke. No, so, yeah, it's not yeah. It's so they really actually, good. we don't have bad experience. These yeah, are actually yeah. very good and they're quite cheap much cheaper and it's fluke okay yeah. but of course it's cheaper <laughs> because we get it from outside source so um yes 
just like the capacitor meters I can't get like this good for this price here um, in Portugal so that's why I had to buy it from uh, from Amazon okay so it's quite cool you know you can just uh, measure everything very interesting indeed see it's got like these clicks that it does and just uh, you can read it actually easier because it doesn't have a stand up actually quite cool okay i didn't know i just saw it now <laughs> okay so um contactor how do you switch on a contactor it's easy so normally contactors will have a this one has a1 or a2 or it will have another symbol okay another eight yes Repeat. sometimes it won't say a1 or a2 it might Most times it does. yeah but uh, even if it's like washed away you can always the identify the coil at the bottom yeah. okay so if you're looking at the contactor from the top you can always see on the far bottom side that's where your coil is but sometimes you'll have a1 here and a2 at the bottom here this other type of so there's a lot of different type of contactors then you have to make sure if you like the, the, the mini um, ones on top a2 a1 yes these ones are actually easier mini because ones. they just right on top and sometimes they fall from each other so before you change the contactor on whatever you're going to do you got to make sure that the coil is yeah. in the same place or you just got to put longer wires and, and if the they're voltage. too short and it also shows the voltage. The older ones in the olden days used to be hard to identify. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. <laughs> those ones were hard. Those ones were a problem. But these ones now they all come labeled, like it's all labeled out and um, very easy. Uh, this is actually also not, not modern. That's old. Now this That's is nice. very old. Used to come in it's there. You see, one ten volts. Now imagine like after a few years or that got wet or oil them. or you know. <laughs> So that's old school. And then you got even more modern ones, which uh, yeah, right there on that side there. They're on the right hand side. Oh, These are bigger nice. ones. You see they also come with all the labeling. Um, it's got a bit of dust, but it's actually brand new. Um, depends on the make. This is actually like a cheaper make. Um, then you got Siemens. We like to use the LS uh, make. We like to use, I don't know if we have any there. That's just so, what is that? Siemens, that's all. Yeah. See, so for example, Snyder, more modern. So it comes with like more plastic coverings, you see. Um, it's just a bit more well designed, you know. Uh, it doesn't mean the other cheap ones won't do the work, they will. It just might not last so long, but you can buy two cheap ones for the price of a expensive one, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> That's a big difference. Um, so I'm just going to use now this one that I have in hand. Yeah, I should be using a nice beautiful one for the YouTube video, but um, I forgot to look Damn. for it in the other place. And it's it's it. yes. Don't worry, we yeah. have a lot of stuff to do. One. Yes, okay. Yeah. So we're gonna we got one wire on one coil. It doesn't matter. There's no negative or positive because this is a, a coil, so it's a AC. I'm gonna measure here first. But you do get DC ones, don't you? Yes, you get DC. So also. yes, this is AC. That's why I say that. So. Two thirty. Two thirty. Yeah. See two thirty yeah, down there. Two thirty one. Okay. okay. Switch off. Connect the contact. That's what's measuring with the multimeter. Yeah. Okay. Connect the contact. We can measure here now. We can measure here. There you go. There so you once go. you apply 30 volts. Yes. 229.9, 230, exactly. And once and you apply the electricity, the coil with the electromagnetic force will just yeah. push it in. Yeah. So your contacts either will be normally open or normally closed. It's normally closed, normally open. So the Some closed will ones open. will open when the coil goes in. Wait, and the normally close. open ones will become normally closed when the okay. coil goes normally, in. Okay. Normally open. Yeah, As you can one. see, normally open and now closed. normally closed. closed. And then this normally one, closed. Normally closed. Right. <laughs> no, no, well, maybe it's not making it. There you go. 
Okay. Are you John? Yeah. Yes. That's the. You gotta type on this. Oh, you didn't. Yeah, okay. Okay. Well. Yes. You see, and it became open. So the circuit is closed. Normally Most... closed. Once the quill is activated, it becomes open circuits. Yeah. Okay. So better. what you do is you pass then your wires through here. You use them as contacts. These are actually all contacts, but then you also get um, when you just want to pass them um, like higher amp uh, currents of um, of electricity. Then you'll go for example like the this ones. one. The this is quite big. This is a forty. Okay. Yeah. So this for forty amps. But here these. Are contacts in a way they are they will work as contacts because but it's really like bigger plating because it's for higher current for electricity okay to pass direct like the the big currents usage okay um, but you can use them as contacts because this will come as normally open so if you use less than 40 amps let's say you use something like I know it's ridiculous but you know if you use it as a contact you can um, you just can't use these, these contacts for a higher amperage um, supply because they aren't built for it. They, they're smaller and they might just melt or damage. And here you also have contacts which you can uh, add. Auxiliary, auxiliary contacts which are these. Okay. Yeah, low, power. Um, low power. And you can just add them on these three pole or four pole uh, contactors okay sometimes they come with two here two here then you just can add more uh, this one comes with a normally open and a normally closed yes okay to use as a switch yeah okay so it's like having switches imagine having switches okay but on a contactor you see that's what it does uh you see, so here the coil, for example, how do you see where the coil is? For example, here you'll see there's an A2 yeah. inscripted into the plastic. Yeah. And it's here is an A1. A1. You see it's different. Here it's different position. So they all change from make to A2, make. Yeah. And A2, here yeah. is an A2. You see, A2, A1. Itself, you see, it repeats can, only the connect, A2. I can connect it up, yeah. So that's what I meant by when you like working with this type of equipment you have to make just sure that it's more or less the same, same place same here. the cheaper makes do copy the structure of the other makes and the design so it's very easy to find cheaper contact cutters um okay. with the same position you see now that's like a big boom <laughs> you see because that's proper for the for the currents actually even as you like put it with very some absorbing one. Um, anti-fire rubber just so that it doesn't make too much noise you know I mean that's uh, you can see Very the difference <laughs> can you even hear them and they go much bigger than this Boom. you got the closed one it's this one yeah, I think it's this one Yes. There we are, closed. And open, you see. These are the auxiliary yeah. contacts. That's it. And the top one, maybe it's the top one here, that's closed. That's an open one. There, it's closed now. Now it's open. You see? It's making more noise because the screws aren't tightened. We didn't tighten all the screws and everything, you know, of the... So, um, and this is a normally... Those three poles on this one is normally... Open. 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 You can also buy normally closed. No, the powerful ones okay. are basic ones. They're all open. They're all open. All open because for okay. So, normally, these will always be um, normally open when you got, like, the three poles for high amp meat. Um... It's hard to find normally closed because normally you just want to like use a contact to close a circuit or open, but you don't want to be passing power all the time, you know, when it's in a normal phase, a state. Yeah. So it's normally open the, the main poles. 
And then you got auxiliary to for other functions. Okay, for the rest of the circuits of machines, automatisms, I mean whatever you want to do. Um so that's contactors. They go from very cheap to super expensive. Even circuit breakers, or oh, the other day there was a guy buying circuit breakers there. One circuit breaker cost 900 euros. Because yeah, it's a special yes, class. It's a high, it's a high power one. <laughs> yes. Like of yes. And they have very sensitive yeah. light. So, um, right, circuit breakers. breakers are very easy as well. Circuit yeah. breakers. Yeah. Very easy. We yeah. can show circuit breakers. See, for example, we got this four pole right here. Yeah, that's a circuit breaker. This is a circuit breaker, which normally you see on your household um, circuit boards. Okay. Um, also the same thing, uh, but here we don't activate coils. It's manually activated and deactivated. Okay, deactivated. So you just like switch on, like a switch on and off. So you also get very different amps just like the contactors so normally yeah, you, yeah. sometimes you'll even see like a bar connect connector it will connect like this phase to the next one and this phase to the next one because you can't cross faces never cross faces okay <laughs> um differential will have uh also four. Leakage. okay it's leakage. leakage so this one here will have, uh, so you use the four for the three phases and the, the neutral, okay? Yeah. Uh, this one has the test button, okay? Um, sometimes they like have this little button. For example, Siemens will have one like this, okay? Which you switch on everything. And you have a little test button over here. You can only test it once it's switched on, okay? Um, so... This is just a circuit breaker. You just put your your phases, your your um, supply into here. For households, you'll put your neutral. Um, but for households, normally, for just the three phases, you'll use a three pole, and for yes. the three phases with neutral, you'll use a four pole. That's yeah. the the standard. Yeah. Okay. Um, and then this is a different circuit breaker. This is one that will be activated. It's, uh, it's a four so pole. it's a normal four pole Three circuit breaker. Neutral. Yes. Okay. There you switch on and off here. And let's say you want to like um, use a safety measurement button or um, device that if you press or do anything, it will like just um, bring down the the trip switch it. trip, trip it. it but without doing a, a short not circuit yes. it's not a short circuit no. it's just uh it's what could we, we can call this like it's a, a switch it's a switch trip uh, switch. that is trip, trip, switch. trip switch yes yeah. a trip switch you know english <laughs> that's um once I, I i give um i close the circuit this has a, a coil Inside. okay so it's not like one phase and one phase getting out no it's a coil so it's uh, phase this and uh, and neutral okay this one's 24 to 48, 48 volts DC. yes ac or dc you get others yes so you get 10 one to 20, 10 whatever. to 20 whatever okay and this is it's on now okay yes you see and as once you, you apply, give supply to the switch to it will the trip, trigger the trip yes it will trip it. it will just trip the circuit breaker you this, can't reset it unless you reset you press this, the button of reset reset and then you reset so yeah. that's like very safe safety. measurements that we like using yeah, it's this, yeah. um, it the safety and you can trip. put like a bunch of emergency switches anything you want just to trip this out yeah. okay uh, i don't know if they use it at, in the house reason. because very in houses reason. normally they want everything to go yeah. off when there's this a short trip. circuit yeah. you know they don't why would you want to like switch off <laughs> no, it's just you know, the house you just go to the circuit board and switch it off <laughs> but for machines and devices and equipment this is the safest thing you yeah. can have you know um, you don't get it normally in a shop this so we also have to order this especially out uh, outside in other countries because um, you don't get it here they don't use it a lot you know um, so that's very interesting um, and that's it for today I think that's it Russ is too much to like soak in <laughs> so yes we got a bunch of stuff we can do 
Now, if you guys want to like um, give some feedback on what you'd like to learn, we here for it, you know. Okay, so then we have like we can work with motors, timers. Um, I don't know. There's so much stuff, you know. <laughs> I can like do something different in every video. Like uh, next, we could do like transformer. Yeah. Teach a bit about what a transformer is. We can do like um, timers. I don't know if you, that's very used. It's more like we use a lot of timers, but not the timers like day and night. It's timers like you want to switch something on, and after three seconds or four seconds, switches off, you know, and switches something else on. Transformers. Uh, but we can um, talk about transformers next time. Um, talk a, a little bit about this. Um, we can also do. Um, Transistors, we can do like a lot of stuff and then do some like experiences. Oh, there is a little cool thing we have here we can talk about. Where is it? We can switch that on and then we can close this video. Yes, next video. Very cool Let's content see. coming. So, here you go. That's just quick. <laughs> so, this is like um, a simulation of uh, a Tesla coil. Like a miniature yeah, thing. Okay, so this is going to boot like some electromagnetic field. Uh, so I'm going to switch uh, on lamps, okay? Without putting direct electricity with wires, okay? So we're just going to use the frequency, okay, of these electrons from this coil to switch on uh, what you call it? It's not fluorescent lamps. No, it's a... Uh, fluorescent lamps. It can be a neon lamps. Neon lamps. Fluorescent. fluorescent sorry, yeah. that's what I was trying yeah. to correct my English. Fluorescent, neon. <laughs> fluorescent lamps, neon lamps, you can... Um, but because of the frequency of the electrons, right? Yeah. You want to explain a bit more? Yeah, we can talk now. Yes. What is the voltage? So, we got up there, we got... What is it? Oh, for this, uh, for this is... Um, you can go up 12, to 12 right? volts, yes. Oh, right. So, this actually comes like a little DIY kit. And you mount it yourself. Uh, very right. cool. Okay. There we go. 12. A bit too much, man. Let's see. No, it gives a, a little light. That's normal. Yeah. So, you can just put it on. You can go up to 10. Yeah. And you're going to see like... Look here. You see there? Look. It's got like a little plasma ray that actually switches on with the finger the because I'm activating it, you know. Yeah. So this frequency. is like a frequency. Yes. I don't and know if you can see inductor. it's going to be following my, my fingers. I can't zoom in this mode. I'll just get out the, this mode. There you go. Oh, we got lamps. Um, you see there? You see? Can you see the way it just like connects to the finger? You can feel like a little prickly thing going on, <laughs> and then it gives like a little pinch Perfect. feeling. <laughs> see? There, there we are. This yeah. is see? Let's neon. Let's, let's, let's see? I've got a neon. You see how the. Switches on. You can yes. hold on the gloss. Yes, you can, you can hold, hold on the gloss, gloss anything. Oh, anything. See? You can hold the gloss, it still lights up. Once it no, gets, you see, it won't the, connect, the it's got to like activate the gases yeah, the inside, yeah. you see? Take the bits of gas, yes. It activates the gas. So what we have here the is frequency. the frequency. You want to explain while and I the hold it? Yeah. The frequency goes to the gas and activates the, the, the electrons in the gas, yes. positive and negative. It's oscillating. Yes. It's oscillating frequency and the frequency is activating the gases in there, positive and the negative electrons. Exactly. That's why it lights up, it activates it. So without the electricity, it does that. It's just by being there. Okay? It's just being there, without even touching. So it's quite cool, because you can see what I wanted to do with the finger. So I put your finger there, to see if yeah. you feel... No, I don't. I don't put my <laughs> <laughs> Come on, it's for, no, for YouTube. It, burns. it does burn it something. It's like a little burn of... Uh... I it's a little light. Yeah, you feel like a tricky. It's like let's say a needle, you know. Yeah. So I would like to like leave my finger there for longer, but uh, I think I'm a bit sensitive today. <laughs> this is just like a LED light it has inside, just to give it like a, a cool. For example, this is a fluorescent tube. 
Yeah, doesn't sure. matter how long it is, you see? So this is a small little one, okay? You can see the the gas is getting activated. So see if I go like sideways? Okay. So with 12 volts, we this lamp is uh, 220 volts. This lamp is 220 volts, this lamp right yes. here. So with 12 volts, okay, we're activating a 220 lamp. Which is actually cool because you're just using the frequency. And now we have this fluorescent lamp, which we cannot break because it's not so good to break. It's not healthy. It's one point two meter. Um, yes, one point two meter. Remember, if this breaks on your clothes or anything, it's, it's got to go to the gas, garbage. You gas. cannot wash your clothes or anything because of and the gas, gas and the floor. chemical components. Yeah. It's very dangerous. So you have to throw away your clothes and everything, and always throw it away in the proper bins. Okay. So once we get like close to this. You want to do it, maybe it's light. better. I'm gonna switch it for light. Yes, and then you can do it That's because great. with the camera. So, okay. no. the lamp is here, no wires connected. Nothing. Okay, on one side and the other. I'm going to switch off the flashlight of the, okay. of the phone. And I'll just by putting it close, okay. just by putting it close, because the frequency is in the air, you can see it's just okay, oscillating the that. tube, you see. Yeah. There's oscillations. So we don't have direct electrons passing through the if you, tube. If you put your finger, it okay. will go right away. You put your finger there. Okay, it will go to you. You see? It will take away from here and shorten it up. Okay. And once you put your hand like... If I block it like that, it will just go like... Yeah. You see? Here, put it closer. <laughs> and now why does closer. this happen? Put it closer. Why does this happen? No, because you're taking it away from there, you're dissipating. I'm becoming you're like a... You're becoming the conductor. Yes, like an antenna, hey? Yes, yes exactly. You're becoming the conductor. And if you I let go... Closer. Yeah, if you let you go see? and you touch it on the side, then it sort of... Evolves. Exactly. Okay, there. So let me just unzoom this. Just hold it, the lamp for me. Okay. Yeah. So I can zoom out. Okay, there you go. See? So if I put my hand here in the middle... Dissipate. I'm dissipating it. The okay, the frequency. So yeah. it's not supplying the frequency yeah. through the whole tube, you yes. see. Now this tube, how long could it be and it will still do this? Right, that's very important. Doesn't matter. No. Now off to like what, important. five meters? Oh no. A little no, bit no. less. Depends on the frequency. I'm yes, sure. the frequency. But uh, I don't know what frequency this is going through. Could be about two or three meters. Yes. It's really going into a megahertz, so. So you know, it's actually it's quite cool, you see. And now you don't see the little plasma wave, but if I touch no, you, this at the same it, time, you're lower, you're you see, it switches off. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And now, once the lamp goes on, you got to bring it closer again to exactly it, to stimulate the gas. You see, and if I touch the little wire, you're gonna you're gonna kill it. Each time I touch it, it switches it off. You see. Yeah, you'll kill it. <laughs> So it's quite interesting, and if you go um, lower into the coil, it will, the point where it will just you see, because those. now we're closing yeah. the, the coil, yeah. so we're changing the, changing the frequency. The frequency. Yeah. So that's quite interesting, it's like a DIY thing, but I thought you guys would think it's like cool. There's actually okay. smaller lamps as well, we've got a smaller lamp small. there. If I hold the lamp on the top and apply it here, yeah. It will go it's on, going, but it's yeah. just because I'm actually. The tip. The tip. Yes, the tip. you see. Tip. The tip won't let it. It won't put it no. on. Okay. Only if I like get closer get to the to gas. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So like if I hold it here, yeah, you see, and it's yeah. on. Yeah. Just trying to do a bit of everything so people like you see. Now this is this one is actually quite cool because. You can like, Smaller, no? it's shorter. you just like activating yeah. different areas. Yeah. I don't know if you can see. Let me switch this light off. There you go. See, so. Yeah, it look on the camera, it looks like it's all on, but it isn't. It's just like, just a, a, a portion of it is on. <laughs> see? But on the camera, you can't see on the camera. In real life, you can see that just like some of the... Totally the the lines, yeah, or the one side. <laughs> See, so you can like put this like closer. You can't really like um, if you put it against something like that. 
becomes yeah. a little bit weaker, but it will still go on. Yeah. Yeah, we'll be in the distance. You see? And if you get a close up. Yeah, it'll go a bit bright. Yes. That's it. I don't know if this transformer will get anything from the no, electric no, no, field. No, no, it, it is because I'm touching the transformer. No, it's because it's steel. Because it's, metal. <laughs> it's only because it's metal. Yeah. But it's, it's getting it's inducing, a. It's inducing into the lamp itself. Yes. But you're not, you're not getting anything out of it. No. Out of the transformer, but no, no, no. You don't get anything. But wherever I touch the transformer bits, the metal, yeah. it's wool. So if I put it on something plastic, you probably won't. Like that. So much. No, it does it nothing, you see. But it, the transformer no, it's too close. is affecting a bit it's of the electric there. field. Yeah, it it's is. Look, you see, that's because of the coil of the transformer. Close. It's inducing a bit of metal. <laughs> it induces all the metal. Yes, it's quite interesting. I if guess. I touch the metal of the lamp. It is a, a bit, but the transform actually changes a bit it's more. Yeah. So as you can see, quite interesting. Um, even at a quite distance, it really does it. So there you go. So you can put a lot of lamps on at the same time. You yeah. can actually have like, I think we tried like four or five at the same time, yeah, and yeah. they went on. Hey everyone, so um, hope you guys enjoy that content, and there's going to be more. Uh, content and there's going to be some of this okay if i see like it's really kicking on <laughs> then i'll keep on doing this type of content as well um any type of project like you interested in seeing i can get into it okay that's what i'm here for i'm here to show you guys what you want to see so thank you very much we're already almost reaching 5,000 subscribers that is beautiful Okay, it's a blessing and uh, God bless you all. Have a beautiful weekend. Okay, and see you on the next one. Out.